all those who are online participating we want to spread the word part of the things you can do is to click the subscribe button like the video that you are watching currently the exponential effect of our corporate partnership is what satan is afraid of he cannot predict it he can't predict what you and your wife will produce he can't predict what me and my wife will produce because on our wedding day you, not, you, you had to see how lean i was from dry fasting the suit was from um, London. They bought the suit from London, okay? And I told them my size. But before the suit got here, fast, oh my God. I was already down from fasting. This was, this was how I, I was in this. <laughs> in fact, what I'm, my, what my mission now is to destroy all my old pictures because, <laughs> because I saw one that was like a clown. I said, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, so if you, if you had seen me on my wedding day with my white suit, uh, seeing how lean I was, and then my wife too was very lean, if you had seen us, you will not imagine that any good thing can come out of this combination. Because your estimation will be according to what you have seen. It was when God helped us after a few years to synergize, God helped us after a few years to form a true corporate quorum. What began to come in? Oh my, I have a lot of stories, but the reason why I want to escape is because I don't want to tell stories. Too many stories. When the alignment began to take place, and it will interest you to know that the moment you get married, don't expect a bed of roses. You are going to see that aspect of the person's strength that has helped the person survive singleness. That raw aspect of the person's existence is going to look you in the face. If, if, if the person got by through his strong will, all right, just like me, I can say, I will not sleep. Not that I'm doing any serious, you know, but I've said it. <laughs> so we are in the category of strong will people. You will not know I'm strong will until there's a fight. <laughs> we don't retreat, oh. we don't surrender. It is, oh my Jesus Christ. So you used to survive with your strong will, and then you now get married, you now discover that the more you are pressing that your strength, the more you are destroying the arrangement. You see, the reason why God set us up by putting us into marriage is so that he can deal with the energy of the flesh that has accumulated, that is now becoming our secret. We are living off it. We are getting ahead with it. All right? So he wants to puncture that strength and conduct a surgery that will remove that human power. So marriage is a good day-to-day -day barometer that gives you an up-to-date measurement of how useful you are in the corporate context. And it happens to be that the body of Christ is a corporate context. Huh? So the way you relate with your wife will give you an insight into how profitable you can be to the body of Christ. To give you an insight. So if by... Are you there? Are you with me? Do you realize that one of the qualifications for eldership in scripture is that he's a husband of one wife and such a man that has been able to bring his children under the gravity of the authority of God? Why is it that God con considers household as a reflection of the true potency of your ministry? Do you know why you say husband of one wife? That's an elder now. Because anybody that has married two wives, he, he should have about eight children if he's so disciplined to have just four women from each of the wives. So such a man is not allowed to be an, a leader in the church. You know why? He already has a church in his house. <laughs> There's a functional assembly. <laughs> There's a functional assembly in his house, so let him pastor that assembly. In fact, he said, not, the same burdens that a pastor will face, he already has it in his inner circle. So let him be the pastor of that congregation. It's enough work. So if by any means you are not doing pastoral work at the expense of the synergy in your own household, you should be put on, on hold. The, your ministry should be put on hold so that you can go back home and fix what is lacking in your family because... Your ministry to the body of Christ 
your family and how you have managed it is a reflection of how much impact you can have on what? The body of Christ. From any angle, you look at my wife, she's happy. Even look, when, when the sun is high, look at her face. She's, you will know this one is a happy, a happy woman. That is a sign that her husband has labored. Aiko Salima Kando Umesi Akude. No, you see. Are you there? Are you there? The way I can bless you is first revealed by the way I have blessed her. If you want to know whether I'm an intercessor, check her life. It took deliberate influence. You know what leadership is? The ability to influence people. It is when you go into real leadership, you discover that influencing people is not about shouting on them. It requires a lot of wisdom to influence people the right way. And in fact, the height of leadership is when you are influencing people and they don't even know. Their life is just falling into line, just falling into place. They are not seeing the energy that is driving them, but they are just coming into alignment. It is the height of leadership. That means there is so much grace available. The devil knows the potential that you have as a corporate entity. And in fact, it's one of those potentials that you cannot predict. So many things can become the outcome of your marriage. It is in that environment that godly seed can be raised unto God. <laughs> For many years, my, my children didn't have a room. The reason is because before I come back from a journey, my wife would have adopted somebody and say, you are one of us. Come, pack your things. Stay in our house. And when I come and see the new person, I won't ask my wife. Ah, no. She knows our calling. Our calling is to disciple as many as we can at close range. So if in her own judgment, she believes that someone should be part of the fold, she can make that arrangement even without my notice. And when I come back, I ask the person, what's your name? I say, okay, your name is... And then life goes on. All right, so now that's part of our assignment. As you, that's what I'm saying. Don't read a book and form your marriage. All right? Your model should evolve from intelligence from above. So what we are running as a family, the model we are running as a family, some people might see it and say, hey, we are private people. I know that's you, but this is my own model. I told many people don't visit my house. Many big preachers don't visit my house because when you come, you'll be disappointed. I warned them not to come. And some of them insisted that they would come to my house. And then they saw so many people and said, how do you survive? Is it in this environment you get this revelation? Don't worry, it works for me. It works for me. That's the model the Lord gave us. And you are going to design your, your model is going to evolve. Sometimes the reason why God brought two of you together is to form a priesthood of intercessors. It's about intercession. And initially, when you people start, you are going to have so many pressures that will push you to the altar. There is no other way you will find respite until you get yourself to the altar. That is an indication of the fact that God has designed your pathway in such a way that you cannot but pray. Do you understand that? Somewhere along the line, you'll find your model as we found our model. I traveled, came back, saw someone in the house, and I knew my wife brought the person. I, we didn't discuss how, why, because we understand our model. Do you understand that? I said, do you understand that? Yes. Now, you see, it is because I am with her that we can set up that administration. And the reason why we are doing that to the people that are in our space today is because we, we are called to do that. It's part of the reason why God brought us together. And at some point, the devil will begin to realize the potential that is available because there's a corporate arrangement that is synergized. It's on the strength of this that most of our warfares will be predicated. Are you still with me? There is an assignment in view that implicates both of you. And you will start doing well to know what the assignment is. Is because the assignment is going to come under attack. The attack you are experiencing is not because of you. The attack you are experiencing is because of your potential. The attack you are experiencing is because of the 
assignment. Is that clear? So it's very difficult to explain attacks within the context of marriage because it is striking at something deeper than just both of you. Very difficult. You will need a lot of discernment to be able to uncover the schemes of the devil in this context. And it will surprise you to know that the marriage context or the family context is one of the most powerful grounds. What I mean by powerful grounds is that if by any means the devil gets a stronghold in that family, he has already infected all the children that come out of that arrangement. If the devil is not able to infect the children, then it means that God has an inheritance in the earth with which he will continue his agenda. It's, it's a very powerful platform and we must understand how to fight for that space. You will notice that the moment Adam and Eve were set up in that garden, the spirit realm became interested in them. How do I know this? In the book of Genesis chapter 2, you will find God educating Adam even before his wife showed up. So God had his own opportunity to come advertise his policies to Adam, advertise uh, the, um, his commandments to Adam, and the things that Adam should never do that will preserve his ecosystem. The moment Eve was brought into being, in the book of Genesis chapter 3, we see Satan also coming to make his own proposal, to show them his own agenda, and to make them believe what he had to offer was superior to that which God had to offer. Uh, once upon a time, I was to preach in a wedding, and um, the message that came to me was the scenario of Genesis. It was a big, big wedding. One of the weddings we have had that had so many influential people in this our own ecosystem on ground available. And that message, <laughs> hallelujah. I prayed to God and I begged him to change the message. There were so many dignities there. If I finished preaching that message, one or, one or two of them lectured me while I was in the university. They would feel that I had seized the opportunity to talk to them. So I asked the Lord, can we change this message? And he refused to change the message, so I just showed up there. And I began to speak about the Garden of Eden. I gave an insight into the topography of the Garden. How that the Garden was somewhat of an embassy. It was a part of heaven that was manifested on the face of the earth. All right? Are you there? Because you will notice that it's through the garden that God now comes to visit with man. You visit him in the garden, not any other place in the earth. He does that without a visa. He does that without permission. Because that garden was a part of heaven that was upon the face of the earth. And you will know that uh, archaeologists have made attempts to find where Eden was <laughs> and they are still trying to find out. And I'm not sure they will succeed until Jesus comes back. Because it's an environment, not a location. If you understand what I mean. So I described how Eden was. Then I showed how Adam was put into that context. Adam was created outside of Eden. But just like your fish will need water to survive. And God put water, put the fish in water. Your plants will need soil to survive. He put the plants in the soil. And Adam will need Eden to survive. So he created Adam outside of Eden and then he put him inside of what? Eden. Are you there? And this Eden we're talking about was shaped like a temple. Temple because, I hope you know, the idea of a temple is a shrine, a place where the physical realm meets with the invisible realm and the physical realm can interact with the invisible realm. The physical, physical beings can interact with spiritual beings. Do you get that? That was the idea of Eden, because God, who is a spiritual being, can step into supposedly physical location and commune with Adam. You know, at this point, the story was becoming sweet, so the, the lecturers were becoming comfortable. They, don't, they didn't know. I <laughs> All right, so that was the arrangement. So the man was like a guardian. Or for those of you that like football, like soccer, he was like a linesman. And part of his assignment in guardianship was to ensure that it is only God he allows into his territory. 
that no other being will pass into the territory. You know, the linesman, you know, he doesn't allow football play outside of the field of play. But unfortunately for Adam, Satan entered into his face without his knowledge and possessed a serpent. He was not aware of it. That was where I told the couple that you have built a, a wonderful garden because the young man had a bow tie and was smiling from here to here. <laughs> and the young lady had a, a glowing, um, what do you call it? Wedding gown, just glowing like that, just glowing all the way. Hallelujah. So I came to them and said, you know what? Satan is going to come into your garden. That's why my, my message changed. Satan. Because anytime you build the garden of marriage, Satan wants to master it. And the reason why he wants to master it is to occasion a shortfall so that your geometric potential will never be realized. And as long as your geometric potential is not realized, you are not a threat. You are not a corporate threat. You are, he, has, he has sent you on an errand. Now, you people are trying to solve problems, no longer to fulfill destiny. So he gives you problems to solve. Just like the math teachers those days will give us psalms. We take it home and you can't rest. You can't sleep well because there are psalms you must solve. I don't know whether you, you got psalms those days, but so many psalms. And if my mother comes and sees that you have not attended to the psalms. There are two things we know our mother, my, my mother for. For potent slap. They <laughs> slaps at some angles. And we also know her for injections. If she touches here like this with a the thermometer and the temperature has risen. <laughs> She's much older now, almost 80 years old. And so gentle. I, I, couldn't, I can't imagine that she was the one. <laughs> that was so powerful. Those so gentle. If I come, she will hug me and say, oh, my son. <laughs> is, this, is this my mother? She was the one that forced us to study the Bible. So if you are seeing that your pastor has a handle on the Bible, I think that woman should be, should be thanked. <laughs> Meanwhile, she was the one that came from a Muslim family, got converted to become a Christian, became more zealous than my father, who was from a traditional Christian background. We are burning for God today because of that woman. Are you there? So Psalms, they give us Psalms. That's what the devil wants to give you. So you are running around to solve the Psalms and you don't know that you're already in warfare. It's Satan that has seen your potential and your corporate geometric output and he has given you a Psalm. May your eyes be open not to run errands for Satan in the name of Jesus Christ. Pastor Dad, I don't know about you, but I have seen that the crisis that happens between me and my wife, when I analyze it, it is Satan. It is Satan. You will need to die to the flesh a little more to be able to live in harmony. So, you might call me a big man on the pulpit. I'm not a big man at home. I'm looking for an environment, an ecosystem that God's grace can flow through like a conductor. And if that is going to happen, then a lot of the flesh will have to be cut off. Now, and when you hear preachers make statements like, I've never had any misunderstanding with my wife, you know, it's been 30 years, leave that church. <laughs> leave, just, don't, no, don't worry, just leave. That. Huh? We are tired of lies. It, it will interest you to know that I consider myself a very gentle man. But the gentility that I have naturally was not sufficient. All right? Another gentle man that I've seen is my neighbor, Ro Jojo. He's a, he's a gentle man. But I don't want to interview you today. You will just find out that you will need more than gentility. Okay, Ro Jojo, come, come. Give him the microphone. Give him. Give. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it's my neighbor, he's a very gentle man, and you must have seen him in the fellowship. Straightforward. He's not a troublemaker. 
So I see you are a gentleman. Um, so can you tell us how you survived in marriage? The, the currency of this gentility that we see, is, is, that what, is that the passcode that makes you navigate in marriage? Just give us a, a summary. It's Praise my neighbor. God. It's my neighbor. It's my friend. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm a team man. And we all know the culture of the team. Now, the, the people out there don't know who a team man is. So, uh, I don't know. You explain it in such a way that they'll be able to follow. Okay. I'm, a, I'm from Benue State. Uh -huh. And the, the thief people are part of Benue. Okay. And traditionally, there is that belief that the woman must always take authorities from the husband. Mm. There is that pride that operates in the man as a thief man. As a thief man. The opportunity I had that made me travel to Meduguri to spend part of my life change my thinking, my thoughts. Uh, for your information, Meduguri is uh, part of northern Nigeria. It's currently where Boko Haram has her neck. Uh, and uh, I think his mom is from there is it yes. yeah so his mom is from there so he took a trip to his mom's place and saw life from a different vista that's what he said so the the peer group i i had there where i was brought up made me to understand that it is not all about you taking being a boss the woman always taking uh, orders from you the two of you have to come together to operate as one. And the thinking of, I am a thief man, so I should uh, exercise those powers because I'm a thief man left my imagination. Amen. I was not thinking in that line again. So even when I came back and those things were in me already, there was no way I could, I could start visiting them back again. So it helped me a lot. to have a, a, a better progression in marriage. All right. So salute my neighbor, and my friend. Now listen, the way you come into marriage is not the way you are going to stay in, in it. You are going to experience transformation. And this transformation is uh, going to be occasioned by many experiences, many situations, and it's going to renew your mind until you begin to see your partner as part of yourself. And then a new kind of civilization is formed. And in that civilization, so many things can hang on it. So many lives can hang on it. And it's a fulcrum for many things that will happen in society and happen in the body of Christ. Now the devil, before he visits any home, hides his identity, hides his intentions, he hides behind people. If you are not deep in the spirit to be able to discern that he has hidden behind someone, is the one talking, he's not the person talking, you might jab the person. And the moment you jab the person, he will, he will disconnect from the person. And it will be just you and the person. So Alphonsus, Pastor Alphonsus, when you raise your hand and you want to, to jab, eh, talk to that hand, say, I'm looking for Satan, not my wife. Just... <laughs> Let me give you an ad advice, all men here. You will not achieve so much jabbing because you'll be striking at the wrong person. Satan covers himself with subtlety so that he is very elusive. You cannot even figure out where he's coming from, where he's attempting to go. So you need to be very designing to fight wars in the family. Lest you be fighting the wrong person, you will send the wrong person out, you push the wrong person out of the place, you throw the person's luggage outside and say, never come back again. It's when you have accomplished that you now ask yourself, by what energy did I? So the devil knowing your potential wants to use, make you come to a point where you use your ability against your wife and she uses her ability against you instead of you people to team up and use your abilities against. So he intends to give you a sum 
like a mathematical sum, homework to do. And you will need to be very discerning for you. When you are angry, convert it to a song. <laughs> because I assure you, the anger level will reach here. Just convert. I even went and bought guitar. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> I bought guitar, I bought flute from Israel. Flute. I bought a horn from Israel. I, all this, all this equipment is to diffuse tension. Diffuse. The one that exercises headship over the man, the one that restrains the man, the one that regulates them. Just like my brother came and my brother said, in African culture, we want to exercise authority. Glory. You see, the thing about the arrangement in Christ is that we don't just exercise authority. Our authority, our capacity, the way we operate is managed by another authority. Because if you are going to exercise authority at will without any regulator over your life, you are going to be wicked and you will think that people should pay you money for being wicked. Pay you salary for being wicked. So Paul says, this is the reality. I want you guys to know this. Many of you don't. The head of every one of you, men, is Christ. So the extent to which you align to Christ's authority will be the extent to which you will see your wife submitting to your own authority. Just in case you have a problem. Maybe your wife is refusing to submit. Don't command submission. If you are in alignment with God and your wife is rebellious, Jesus himself will deal with her. Give, give her lessons that she will never forget in her life. You, the, thing, the idea there is you labor to be where? In alignment.